to improve company culture with the right leadership style in management. But well, I have Robin Johnson with me today, and we are continuing in the Noble for Business Anthology series. And we're going to be talking about quiet quitting. We're going to be talking about people dissatisfied now returning to work, what that looks like, and the post-pandemic workplace. Robin, welcome to the show. Hey, and I love your 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 chapter title, elevating the human side of enterprise. Because again, it's all about how to improve company culture. So welcome, my friends. What was that? I'm sorry. I said welcome, my friends. Oh, oh welcome. I'm glad, very glad to be here. I'm very, very glad to be here. It's been a really uh, awesome experience getting to be a co-author. Cass Henry, Dr. Henry, is amazing, and she has surrounded herself with wonderful, intelligent, capable people uh, committed to being a force for good in the world. And I just, I just consider myself very uh, fortunate, very blessed to have met her many years ago, and to be in, to be in her orbit. So, very, very, very glad to be here. So that's that's absolutely one of the the secrets of life is that you get to surround yourself with great people and connect for the sake of connecting. So that's I live by that. And um, I also happen to think uh, Dr. Kaz is fabulous as well. And and, um, this is this is the anthology she's bringing forward. And um, I got to submit my review yesterday. So I read the book and I love the book. And again, so it, it's it's all about noble for business, and 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 we're getting so many right brain, STEM philosophy coming from that v- viewpoint that it's not always, and also we're getting the transformation what that looks like in corporate where it's finally now getting into. So I love this because again, we're we're post pandemic. People are now being asked to go back to work and they're not they're not necessarily sure if they want to. They're they're ambivalent about how what their life looks like. Now we were getting into this before and you would say the quiet quitting, right? And and that what that means and that there's two camps. So go into a little bit again, because it's all again, it's company culture. And then does that actually now take in the identity and the wants and the purpose of the workers? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, as, I, as I was mentioning, quiet quitting actually has a couple of different, you can come at it uh, at the phrase and at the behavior in a couple of different ways. In one way, it's actually, a, in taken one way, it's a positive uh, mental health strategy and stance that yes, I enjoy my work, I'm committed to my work, uh, but instead of working 80, 90 hours a week, I'm gonna work 45 or 50 hours a week, and then I'm gonna spend time with my family, I'm gonna spend time with friends, I'm gonna go for that vacation or go on a walk or read a book. So taken from that context, that's actually a very healthy mindset. The other mindset, which more immediately comes to mind when you hear that phrase, is the notion of, I'm going to do the bare minimum that I have to do to still keep getting a paycheck. And then at five, I'm clocking out and I'm done. The, the, and, and in reality, that's been happening <laughs> long before uh, a post-COVID event. It's been happening probably for, you know, for millennia with people on the job. But the, the issue is with that mindset, the hours that you are at work, you're less engaged. You're less putting forth effort. You're less doing a, a better job. And so the mindset that you're coming at, that makes a big difference uh, for the hours that you're there. So you know what? I mean, there's been so many sitcoms, The Office, and that that quite quitting, that camp of people saying, I'm going to put in what I need to put in, and then I'm going to have my life after work. Has that is that really a new thing? Uh, No, it's not a new thing. And and I think that there's a there's a now a movement toward it's not a new movement. Obviously, it's been around for many, many years, if not decades, but it's coming to the forefront. 
and that is finding um, finding meaning at your job. You know, is your company have a sense of meaning, have a sense of purpose? And one of my, uh, I just recently, recently, as in COVID class of 2020, uh, got my master's in applied positive psychology from University of Pennsylvania, and did a lot whoa, of whoa, studies. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What? You, you can't just drop that. So you just got your master's from UPenn? Yes. Cool. And I have my cat again still hanging up over there. Cool. I, it was, it was my in, friend. Yeah. So I had my cap and gown is May of 2020. Of course, it was online. So I decorated my living room. I wore my cap and gown in my living room to the grocery store, to the gas station. And <laughs> it was it was great fun. But Penn promised us that we would someday we would have a live graduation. They're huge on graduation. It would have been the 264th graduation for Penn. And so just this, just in May, a few months ago, they finally let us have a live graduation and my cap and gown had been hanging in the front of my closet for two years. So I packed it up, flew back to Penn, walked down Locust Walk, walked past Benjamin Franklin statue and had a great time. And uh, so yeah, University of Pennsylvania, and they that was is known as the birthplace with Martin Seligman, uh, the birthplace of the field of positive psychology and then going along with that, um, the field of positive organizational scholarship, where you're taking uh, what is not only what is good for individuals, but what is good for organizations. Because ultimately, organizations are made up of individuals. Uh, but how do those individuals interact? So, so yes, I did do that. COVID cost of 2020 and, uh, and all that. I, so I, want to, I want to stand in that a second because that, that, that chapter and that completion, that accomplishment is defining who you are and your purpose. And you're getting to do that and bringing you forward. And then also value, right? So all of that, that experience and standing in that for others that are, again, it's coming back to people are saying, I want to stand in my purpose. What did that make you feel? And and what would you say to someone to say, even in tribulation and changes and not getting the first time graduating, that you still got to do it? How did that make you feel? Well, it, it was really great, of course. And it's interesting you bring up the notion of, of tribulation. And, you know, in positive psychology, we study positive emotions. What what are what good are positive emotions? We know why we have negative emotions from an evolutionary standpoint to help us survive. But what good are positive emotions? Lots of research done on that. But one of the one of the um, ten positive emotions identified by Barbara Fredrickson, who's known as one of the mothers of positive psychology, is hope. Well, you're only going to have hope if there is some challenge presenting itself or some dire situation hope only exists in the face of challenge and so the people who say that positive, positive psychology is all about just having a smile on your face all the time that is absolutely not true it's it's meeting life on life's terms but looking for the good looking for the possible looking for the doable and um and looking for the silver lining in the in the cloud, acknowledging the cloud. Yeah, it's raining. There's a cloud. You know, I'm to get out my umbrella, but I'm going to look for I'm going to look for the good. So there, there, there's there's all of that combined. Well, I, I, I'm gonna, I'm going to lean in on that then. So when with the quiet quitting, because we're still talking about corporate culture, we're talking about leadership style, and we're also talking about about the individual being recognized and heard, meaning what, what they want at, or that, that, that sense of worth, right? Mm -hmm. So within the quiet quitting, there is a, a, a loss of hope where, where they are. So then coming from the background that you have and the chapter that you wrote, Someone that is sitting there, a potentially having to go back to work and not 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 being able to juggle everything, but even more, the oh that feeling, that re, that that feeling resignation, that feel, and that's why it's called quitting. 
that what would you say to them to give them hope? Give them hope. Well, it's interesting. There is a very fam famous phrase by um, Peter Drucker, who's known as the father of, um, he's like the father of business management. I know I'm, I'm, I know I'm phrasing that incorrectly, um, but he says, culture eats strategy for lunch. And so you can, and my point is every single strategy, every protocol, every technique is ultimately created and implemented by human beings. And unless you appropriately address the human element of business, your strategy will either fail or it will not be as successful as it might have been. Now, bringing that back to um, to the individual's quiet quitting, for me, one of the most foundational elements of corporate culture is what is your meaning? What is your purpose as, a, as an organization? And um, it's amazing. I just a second ago had a, a can of WD4. I gave a presentation yesterday to the San Diego Association for Financial Professionals and I had my little can of WD-40 that I hold up. Who does not have a can of WD-40? Well, I, I grabbed it, ran downstairs to squirt into the lock on my front door because my key was getting stuck. Anyway, um, for, for an, I bring that up as for an example. Several months ago, I heard an interview by the president of WD-40. Who does not have a can of WD-40 in their closet? Well, that duct tape, right? Yeah, That's duct tape, and, and, yeah. you're, and you're... Um... Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, you also have your, your beach towel. That's it. Yes. That's all you need. All right. Exactly. And he said, this is not just oil in a can. This helps families solve problems so they can go on vacation. This helps companies fix their machines so they can stay in business. He went on for half an hour about the meaning behind WD-40. And um, and then another great example, I love this example, it's from Clark Industries. It's a four generation family owned company. And their sense used to be, it's a, it's a pest control company. So the sense used to be, well we, kill, well, we kill mosquitoes. That's what we do, we kill mosquitoes. <laughs> Instead, they put their heads again, they said, no, we're, we're a lot more than that. For four generations, for four generations, there must be something more than just we kill mosquitoes. So instead, now what they say is, we help make communities uh, safe, livable, and comfortable around the world. With that mindset, they began looking at, okay, if that's what we do, how can we um, create less toxic pest controls? How can we lower our environmental footprint? They had a company job that everybody hated, they couldn't get it filled, and is driving around and checking the meters. Whatever meters they were checking, I can't remember which ones they were, but it, they had to drive around, check the meters. Very boring job. So they said, well, why don't we have people ride bicycles? You know, and, and when it's nice weather, ride a bicycle out to check these meters. And it obviously lowered their footprint, but now people love that job. They have a waiting list for people who want to do that job. They also created some special, a special type of, of net, a mosquito net, and sent them to different villages. And now there's three villages in Rwanda where because of these mosquito nets, they have eliminated elephantitis uh, in those villages. And so that's just an example of if you can find meaning in your work, uh, and, and it, this is a great, and Here's another example I'll just throw out there because my colleague, my classmate, two of my classmates, their capstone, their huge research paper was on uh, uh, successful organizations that had great meaning. And so every week or two, she's posting on LinkedIn. Her name is Tamara Miles and Wes Adams. Tamara is, is really consistently po posting on LinkedIn about finding meaning in your organization, in your company. She shared how her son got his first job, you know, bagging groceries at the grocery store. And he just tried to, he viewed it as, I'm helping the customer, I'm helping them have a good day. You know, I'm not just putting bag, food in a bag, I am serving the community. And and with that attitude, of course, he did a really good job and now has gotten a, gotten a promotion. So once again, 
even the most menial job can have meaning and purpose and and you can use that to elevate um what you're doing and and bring bring some purpose to what you're doing during those eight to five hours so so let's let's bring this around a little bit again so when when someone is 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 resigned the quiet quitting their their lack of hope and the lack of hope is also because they're finding no worth or purpose they're not recognized work or purpose so what you're saying is that 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 the companies them in themselves get to shift how they're looking at their purpose from the example of we kill mosquitoes to oh my goodness look at all these other things we do so that there's a shared sense of purpose and that is one of the ways of starting to bring hope and 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 collectiveness within corporate culture that that is absolutely true that is something that you can't that 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 the organization can do that is done organizationally um but and, and i realize i didn't directly answer your question which i'll try to do now yeah is i am just a real believer in individual responsibility and being proactive and being productive and if you're in a job that doesn't have very much meaning and it's just eight to five i say that in your little tiny corner of the world you can start bringing purpose you can start bringing meaning or you can at least come to work with a smile on your face you can look around and 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 compliment the your coworkers for doing a good job you can help your coworkers succeed maybe they need some information to help get a project done or or something but you can look around your little tiny corner of the world and say how can i be proactive in helping my my teammates, how can I be proactive in doing a better job for the for the customer, and that you can bring uh, you can bring light to your corner of the world. At the at very end of every presentation that I do, uh, when when it's a webinar type thing where there's a PowerPoint, I have a picture of a plant that is growing outside my townhouse, and every single leaf is pointing out toward the sun none of the leaves are growing toward the wall. And that's called the heliotropic effect. It's the phenomenon where living organisms will gravitate toward light. Well, the same phenomenon happens in human beings, that human beings are attracted toward light. Yeah. We're attracted toward positivity. And so in your corner of the world, you can be light in your corner of the world. Even if you're doing something very um it might seem unimportant or mundane within your corner of the world you can make a difference okay so uh, so i i love that so i i again so as as people are, are are going to work and they're not feeling fulfilled and or recognized in in, in aligning their purpose to what they're doing that the piece it always comes back to the human element and then within the human element, that you're there so for that moment you get to be the light and then the light is where others gravitate to the light whether that is the sun whether that is that is just the, the energy that we gravitate to and then also there's hope in the possibility. Where does that light as you're shining it? What does that do? Yeah, um, here, here's an excellent example. Um, there is an organization called the Wellbeing Lab created by Michelle McQuaid. She graduated from my same program, but about maybe 10 years ago. She worked for one of the um, big name accounting firms. And so, she began she was in the program every week when she you know in, from her class and you know and going back to work she would then you know post some things to her boss hey here's something i learned here's something i learned and then she began posting it to her teammates here's something that i learned here's something that i learned well they then created this, a division where she then started posting all these things about how to have better organizations and then she went off and left that company and, and then started the well-being lab. But that's an example that, that no one said to her, 
you need to do this, you need to do that. She just of her own accord began putting out little sunbeams of light and sharing what she knew to help people have greater well-being with her boss, with her teammates. And then that morphed into something bigger and that morphed into something bigger. And now the well-being lab actually was just nominated as being one of the, uh, in Australia, one of the, the organization of the year for, well, for mental health. And so it, it sprouted from, I'm just going to share a few things with my teammates uh, that I've been learning about well-being and, and positive psychology. And now it's an organization getting nominated as organization of the year in Australia. So that, that's an example. Okay. So I, I, so again, it's when, when you're standing in hope, be the light, be the light and, and connect with others. And then you stand a possibility what that might turn into an example, the well-being Institute. I love that. All right. So Robin quickly, as we're wrapping up, how can people get in touch with you and what would that look like? Um, you can contact me at Robin at Robin learning systems.com cool and my website is robin learning systems and yeah, that's going to be here so, and, and quickly so what what is robin learning systems robin learning systems if i focus on two things my i'm just passionate about helping organizations be teaching them and inspiring them to be more humane ethical and resilient and I phrase it, um, creating workplaces where people want to stay instead of wanting to leave. And I also help individuals um, develop resilience and discover and develop their character strengths that that can enrich their life and enrich the lives of those around them. But I'm really huge into resilience, organizational resilience, and in individual resilience. And also uh, for individuals, create. I didn't. We didn't touch on creating a sense of belonging. Uh, people having a sense of belonging at work. One of the driver, drivers of belonging is having a having workplace where there's a sense of meaning. So those are inter interrelated. I, again, Robin Johnson, um, and I, it's it's um, company culture, and I'm, I'm, and again, it's. Uh, Re repeat the um we will have the the repeat the the my what my how do you yes. get a hold of me yeah um robin at robin learning systems dot com okay i love it everyone thank you for coming on and um great work and congratulations and graduate love that all right everyone mm -hmm. that's it for thank today you. and um stay tuned for the next uh show okay thank you bye bye. Bye.